Hi, everybody. This is Addison Shonland and Richard Sherman from Air Insight. Our guest today is Danielle McLean from High Sky. Danielle is a hydrogen aviation strategist. And uh, Danielle, thank you for speaking with us. What we want to talk about today is hydrogen. Yes. First off, thank you so much for pronouncing my last name correctly. That is rare. It's a Scottish name. Most people say McLean, <laughs> where I'm from. So thank you for that. Excited All to be right. here. Okay, great. So um, Richard, shall I start here? T tell us, what is High Sky? Who's behind it? And what do you want to achieve? Yeah, uh, great question. So High Sky Society is a brand new nonprofit. And our mission is to advance hydrogen aviation across the United States. It spun out of... We'll say in 2020, the Air Force launched a program called Agility Prime, and it was sort of like their call to the industry for EV tolls and innovative aircraft. Um, <clears throat> I don't know the exact number of how many people participated, but it was in the hundreds, and maybe five to ten of us were focused on hydrogen, so a really small group of us. And we also had different views on how hydrogen should be implemented for aviation. Um, so we decided to get together and start a group. It started with about five of us um, just having you know monthly chats. And then we brought in Toyota as a guest speaker. And the next thing you know, we had over a hundred attendees. Now we're at over 400. Um, we've been doing it since 2020 and so that was under the organization, um, the Vertical Flight Society. And so I was the hydrogen consultant to the Vertical Flight Society, which is another aviation nonprofit. And we called them a long acronym for you here, the H2 EV Tall Council. And for the audience that isn't familiar with EV Tall, it's electric vertical takeoff and landing. So sort of this big air taxi um, boom that we're seeing happen. and me and many others are, um, you know, are uh, have the belief that hydrogen is the way to really um, bring those types of aircraft to fruition, but not just those types of aircrafts, all, you know, all aircraft, um, essentially decarbonizing aviation in general. So under the Vertical Flight Society, um, I hosted webinars for almost three years now. I can't believe it. And then um, we decided to turn that into some projects. And then it eventually turned into a spinoff of a new um, nonprofit, which that's what High Sky is. So High Sky is the spinoff that came from the three years of webinars that we did with the Vertical Flight Society. And target. Yeah, that's a great question. So it's we we have three things that we want to accomplish. One is to educate the public on aviation emissions, how hydrogen can really solve that problem. There's still, you know, if you ask the average person, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about hydrogen and aviation? And they're going to say a word that I hate, but um, you know the word they're going to say. Um, it starts with an H and it's not hydrogen, but they say Hindenburg. Um, you know, and, and these people that even people in aviation. So we hear that all the time. And so, you know, number one, getting people to understand that hydrogen is just as safe as any other gas or fuel that we use. And it's been used for decades in other industries. Aviation is no different. Um, so kind of getting rid of that stigma. And then the second thing that we do is to advocate for, you know, adequate policy, relevant policy, especially here in the U.S., where we're kind of lagging behind Europe and especially Germany, seeing what they have going on. And then third what we um, what we aim to do is bring together the relevant players of the ecosystem um, so that we can have a consensus and basically be the the hub for all things hydrogen aviation. So if you have a product or service that you're selling or you need, then you would want to connect with us and go through us to connect with the relevant people that you need. So three things, educate, advocate and connect. I saw that you you have a background with Spirit Air Assistance. Does that help you? Um, interesting question. You know, it does because I, and a lot of people confuse Spirit Air Systems with 
Spirit Airlines. It's not the same thing. Spirit Aerosystems is a number one supplier for Boeing. They made every single 737 that was ever built. Um, the fuselage was built in Wichita, Kansas, which is where I work. So that was really cool getting to go out there and get on the aircraft. So like a lot of engineering jobs, you're on the computer a lot. Well, if I was in Katia and I saw something that wasn't making sense, I could just walk out there on the shop, get inside the fuselage of a triple seven or an A350 or, you know, a 737 and ask somebody like, what is, what is this? And get in there, crawl around, take pictures of it. So yeah, it helps a lot. And I was a stress engineer and then, um, at first in, in metals, but then in composites, which has really played into um, helping me understand hydrogen tanks and storage and so forth. Um, something, I kind of got bored as a stress engineer um, and I wanted to do something different. And so I told my manager one day, um, you know, I want to work on uh, R&D. And he said, well, what, what R&D program do you want to work on? And I said, well, it doesn't exist yet. And he's like, okay, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that. And I was like, well, let me talk to the lead of R&D and pitch this idea. And I did. And a couple of months later, um, I founded their advanced air mobility team. It was, let's say the advanced air, no, it was urban air mobility, advanced product development team, long word. I mean, we were in stealth at the time, so I couldn't tell anybody about it. And so um, that was really exciting getting funding for that program and worked on that for a while. And then um, eventually, you know, it's a big company, there's bureaucracy, it wasn't going as fast as I wanted it to go. So I left and started my own company. Yeah. But speaking about hydrogen, and especially hydrogen in North America in the US, uh, where is it? Uh, we know the discussions about hydrogen here in Europe, uh, Apple's is at the forefront. Boeing is taking uh, a careful approach, uh, but says we have tested and worked with hydrogen for years. Of course, every launcher, every rocket uses hydrogen in the US. But uh, from an aviation point of view, what's the status of hydrogen in your country and where do you want to, to go? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we did a white paper in 2020 comparing, um, we looked at automotive. But what you've seen with automotive and hydrogen is almost exactly what we're seeing in aviation. And we, you know, we compared the refueling stations. We looked at Germany, China, South Korea, um, a few others, Japan um, and the U.S. And if you look at where we were in 2020, the amount of hydrogen fueling stations was about the same, give or take. Um, but what Germany had done and had on their, their agenda to do was just way higher. So we looked at 2020 versus 2030, and the U.S. is pretty low, where Germany is just taking over the game. And we used, you know, based on where the investments were going, where the initiatives were. And, and, and aviation is no different. So, you know, as far as hydrogen, where we have it in the U.S. is in automotive and it's mostly in california and then some in the northeast so the challenge we have is if you have a hydrogen fuel cell car you can't leave your state um so that's you know something that we need to overcome um you know elon did it with tesla there's no reason we can't do it with hydrogen um and aviation aviation's a little bit trickier so you know, I mentioned um, in our email, don't let me forgot, forget to talk about the chicken and the egg problem. And and this is something that frustrates me. Um, and, and I don't know the answer. And I'm, con I'm continuing to research this area and always open to hear thoughts on this. But we didn't build gas stations before we mm -hmm. had cars. We didn't build airports before we had aircraft. But here we are you know, trying to build hydrogen infrastructure before we have hydrogen aircraft. And I hear, and, and I, I get the problem because my first startup was a for-profit hydrogen EV tall. And our biggest challenge was getting hydrogen. It wasn't flying the hydrogen aircraft. We retrofitted um, a drone. It wasn't a full scale, <clears throat> but our biggest challenge was getting, we had to drive hours just to get the hydrogen. And so 
this is kind of what got me into the nonprofit space. Like, this is a real problem that we need to solve. So not only do we need to be, you know, and so at, for me, from a startup, you know, that needed hydrogen, I could see, yes, we need hydrogen hubs, which mm -hmm. is where most of the U.S. money is going into hydrogen hubs, green hydrogen production. And that's great. I love that. But what we're missing is the initiatives for the aircraft. And if we don't have that, it's very difficult for them to innovate. And then you see, you know, SAF being adapted, yeah. which I'm not a fan of. Um, but, you know, we could solve the problem if we could incentivize it for folks like Boeing. Boeing's not a stupid company. They're being safe. But, you know, we haven't incentivized it for them. So they they don't really have a reason to get involved in that space. So that's something that we're actively working on changing. Yeah. Addison, do you see any airports with uh, hydrogen facilities when you travel uh, along the world? Nope. <laughs> Not yet. Nope. I, I, I find that the, the hydrogen thing is is fascinating. You know, it, it's interesting, uh, Danielle, you mentioned Toyota. Obviously, they are the leading player, I guess, with hydrogen. And there's this lovely little ad, you know, with the exhaust. And all that's coming out of that exhaust is water, they tell you. It's great. But <clears throat> the the challenge with hydrogen, as far as I can understand, is is storage on an airplane. Absolutely, and we just did um, our September. So every month we do those webinars. Um, we call them High Sky Monthly. They're free and open for everybody to attend. Our September speaker was a company called Plasma Kinetics. Check them out. They're doing solid state hydrogen. It's a game changer. They can store so much more hydrogen and all you have to do, it's a film that rolls up. It's a picture like, you know, a roll of aluminum foil, but it is an aluminum foil. It's a special, you know, it's a special material that they have proprietary in, on, but uh, you, you shine a light on it and it releases the hydrogen. It's a game changer for aviation. And I mean, even if you think about the logistics of shipping either gaseous or liquid. Um, so we're we're very interested in solid state hydrogen. Um, it solves that problem. It allows even long haul flights to use hydrogen. Um, so there are solutions. I mean, technology is moving so fast. Just uh, mm -hmm. yesterday or the day before, I saw you know they successfully achieved hydrogen fusion in California. I think it was in California and that also can play a role in hydrogen. And so um, what's, what I try to keep in mind is I, I love hydrogen. Um, I love how energy dense it is and how efficiently you can fly an aircraft, whether using hydrogen fuel cells or combusting hydrogen, which does have NOx. So I'm a bigger fan of hydrogen fuel cells, but not always feasible. But then, so if you, if you say, okay, I know we want to use hydrogen. How do we store that hydrogen on the aircraft and, and don't be limited by it being half, you know, by it having to be either gaseous or liquid and kind of think outside the box. There's some other technologies that I can't talk about that take it even a step further. You can use your imagination where you don't even have to store the hydrogen on the aircraft at all. Yeah. Um, and, and so technology is moving fast and, um, and so that, I guess I'd rather see the U.S. invest more into the aircraft and how we can innovate with the aircraft. And then the infrastructure will be developed to support it. But what we could do is where we're seeing these hydrogen hubs being developed is allocate some of that hydrogen to people developing you know, innovative technologies like hydroplane. You mentioned Zero Avia. Um, you mentioned a couple others. Uh, I forget the other you mentioned, but yeah, you know, uh, allocate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, allocating. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go on forever. There's a little bit of a lag, so feel free to interrupt me. If yeah. I interrupt you, I, I apologize. <laughs> Oh, I, I mentioned Boeing. Boeing is uh, seeing hydrogen not coming on stream before 2040 at the earliest, 2050. And they take a very careful approach. Um, Airbus is more ambitious. But when I look in the United States, you have, of course, universal hydrogen with the capsule system. Uh, Zero Avia is also connected to and related to the uh, U.S. research project. So is hydrogen... Um, it, it, something is happening in, in America on hydrogen, but it's not going quick enough, in your opinion. You want to push them. 
Yeah, especially on the um, I'll, I'll tell you the the aviation, not the legacy companies, not Boeing, and and I don't know that that Boeing will. You know, they're sort of in. I think the innovators. I always forget if it's the inventor or innovators dilemma, where you have a business model that works really well. You're the leader in this space. Why would you change? You know, so they might be struggling a little bit with that. But some of these smaller companies, um, Hydroplane, which is owned by a woman CEO, which is also so important. Um, we also just did a white paper on the workforce and aviation and the biggest challenge that aviation is struggling with with growing their workforce is diversity. Um, that was a big part of the reason why I left my job. I never worked with mm -hmm. another woman engineer. I was in a room full of men which some of them were my friends, but a lot of times I didn't have much to talk about with them and it was really lonely. So seeing companies that are different um, leading this space, uh, are, are it's really exciting to see. And um, there's some other companies you haven't mentioned who are being a little bit more quiet um, that have really deep pockets that you wouldn't expect to see in aviation um, making some really big bets and really doing some exciting things, which you can learn about in our webinar vault. Um, we've had them on our, um, on our monthly webinars. And yeah. so, yeah, there, there are things happening. Not a lot of people know about it, um, but the lack of policies there. So, you know, we need to see like the FAA department of transportation, um, the policy writers, so state and federal and city with the airports um, with, you know, all come together in this ecosystem together and, and rather than pitting us against each other is all coming together and say, this is the best for this industry. And I would love to see Boeing become a part of that ecosystem. Yeah. What, what, what change will the Inflation Reduction Act and the uh, funding that comes with that have on, on how quickly hydrogen will develop for aviation in the U.S.? A big change. What's really exciting about the Inflation Reduction Act is we're seeing a lot of airports become hydrogen producing hubs, which is something we talked about in our white paper in 2020, having no idea that this, um, you know, was coming to be to this Inflation Reduction Act was, you know, on the horizon. Um, it is possible to, you know, especially some of the airports that have a lot of land or, you know, close to a lot of land and a lot of water, um, they can become hydrogen producing hubs. So and, but that, but that's sort of where I get into the chicken and egg thing, because now we have airports becoming hydrogen producing hubs, but they don't have the aircraft to support it. But that's OK, because they can start with their ground vehicles and then we'll see, you know, the, the um, aircraft come in. But there needs to be more. It needs to be more streamlined. That information, um, that ecosystem needs to be talking to each other. Those hydrogen producing hubs and airports need to understand what those aircraft need and how they need it, um, you know, what state the hydrogen is going to be in, how they're planning on storing it. And I think it's important that we don't rush to make a decision on saying, okay, it's all liquid and, and try the different technologies and look at, you know, solid state and gaseous and understand them. And for the airports and, um, you know, and the government to, mm -hmm. to be involved in, in that process, in that learning um, but but it is big because we're seeing airports get involved in hydrogen in a way that they've never been able to before. So so I think it's big. Um, I think one of the things you asked me were was is the U.S. going in the right direction? I think yes, we're going in the right direction, but I don't think we're going fast enough. Um, as I you know talked about in the white paper in 2020, um, we have some catching up to do. And and who's uh, to blame for that? Oh, goodness. That is a, ah. <laughs> uh, I would say politics, um, mm -hmm. our political uh, climate. And that's another thing that's really exciting about hydrogen is it's really bipartisan. Um, if we, you know, look at using existing pipelines for, you know, moving hydrogen, um, it's, we're not looking at a situation where oil and gas is being disrupted. We're looking at an opportunity for oil and gas. So I think that's going to really help things in the U.S. Um, but to say who's to blame, I mean, capitalism, <laughs> if you have something that's making money, um, you know, why change it? But yeah, there, there's, I could, I could speculate all day about that, but um, I try not to focus on blaming and just looking at solutions, but um, I like the question. <laughs> 
but but the high sky is very much about uh, lobbying, about educating, about bringing the message across to the industry, uh, to the politicians, uh, to, to to create an ecosystem. Um, and of course, you need to educate the public as well, because they will probably call it the Hindenburg <laughs> if they're yep. old enough. Yeah. But uh, is, in what priority and 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 how quickly are you going on on this? And, and do you have a specific dot on the horizon where you want to be in, uh, let's say, a year from now? Yeah, yeah, we we do. Um, our I'll say our twenty our moonshot our twenty twenty six moonshot is to actually have a, a demonstration, a public demonstration of a hydrogen powered aircraft flying between two airports by 2026. And, and that's gonna take a lot of effort. So this first year is forming the strategic partnerships that we need to make that happen. And you know we're talking to everybody and we're interested in working with everybody, especially, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough, especially the folks not from aviation. Because where our learnings lie are in the forklift industry, um, you know, in other areas where people have been using hydrogen for a long time that we can learn from, which is exactly what Universal Hydrogen did, um, you know, partnering with Plug Power and looking at what Plug Power did um, with their, you know, in the forklift industry. So, so one year is forming these partnerships to build the necessary ecosystem to get to our moonshot. Um, it, we're getting ready to publish a white paper that'll go over all of that. Uh, it's still in development. Hopefully by the end of January is when that should be published. So that'll go into that in more detail, but yeah, right now. And then, so, you know, in the really short term, we do our free webinars. We have the world's largest hydrogen aviation event in June that we'll do every year, over a thousand attendees, over a hundred yeah. presentations. Wow. And, and then, yeah, it's a big undertaking. And then in addition, doing some fun stuff on TikTok to really get, um, you know, lay people, for lack of a better word, um, excited about this um, and interested in a, I guess what we were, we got to think of a better name, but we've been calling it science for non-scientists. Um, but, you know, doing some, some fun stuff just to get it on people's radar, because most people don't think about aviation like we do. So, yeah. um, you know, just just building awareness and partnerships um, is our near term. And do you have competition or do you have uh, friends uh, that you can collaborate with or other events that promote hydrogen? I just got an email for uh, an event, which is again in May in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, uh, the hydrogen forum last year or this year. Actually, uh, there was also a very big one. The next will be even bigger. So there's. You're not just the only one pushing for hydrogen. Uh, there is a movement. There's a huge movement. We started High Sky because there wasn't anybody in the U.S. doing it. Um, uh, so we're learning a lot from other countries. And yes, we very much want to partner and learn, um, especially, you know, the Europeans are light years ahead of us on where we would like to be. So, yeah, um, so yeah we, we do not want to compete with them. We want to learn from them. And, you know, be as synergistic as we can cross promo. I think I also got that same email. I won't be able to make it because I'll be busy getting ready for a June event. Um, but maybe yeah. next year I'll make it. But, um, you know, we're partnered with the Vertical Flight Society, who does a lot of innovative stuff in aviation. Um, and they also have some hydrogen initiatives. <laughs> but but we didn't see um, we didn't see an initiative in the United States specifically for hydrogen aviation. There's some sustainable aviation fuels. There's some, you know, lowering emissions. And then we have organizations like AIAA and Vertical Flight Society who have many initiatives, hydrogen being one of them. Or we see transportation initiatives where aviation is kind of an afterthought. It's included, but it's just like, you know, a, a little paragraph out of a 30 page white paper. So we wanted to be just hydrogen aviation for North America. And, and that didn't exist. And if it does, please introduce me to them because we couldn't find it. We, we would have become a member if we could have found them. <laughs> Danielle, in terms of hydrogen uh, and, and the density of energy, how long is it? I mean, how do you get the hydrogen to get to the same density as fossil fuel or even SAF? Well, okay, so energy dense, it's, it's much more energy dense. So there's more energy 
in say a kilogram of hydrogen, 10 times more, depending on which fuel you're comparing it to. The challenge is the volumetric density. And I'll use this analogy that my chemistry teacher used to me years ago and the PhDs hate it when I say this, but I, I like to talk to people in ways that they can understand and they don't need a PhD. So I'll say hydrogen molecules don't like each other. They want to, so you, you put them in a balloon. It's like, this is the way my chemistry teacher described it ages ago. He said, imagine a bunch of kids in a classroom or a bunch of kids on recess and they all go nuts and they all want to spread out and they're all just going wild. That's sort of hydrogen. It, they don't want to be close together. So they kind of, you know, they don't like each other. So it's hard. So they take up more space. So it takes a lot of energy to compress them into a space where you could get the same amount of like avgas jet fuel um, mm -hmm. or, you know, automotive fuel. So the energy is there, but it just takes up. So, you know, important not to confuse um, mass and volume, but a kilogram of hydrogen has 10 times more energy than let's say, you know, gasoline, but it's going to take up much more space. And that's why I'm so interested in solid state hydrogen, because you eliminate that problem with solid state hydrogen, because interestingly enough, hydrogen will bond to another, it'll attract to another material easily. Um, and then you can get them closer together than closer together than you could if it was in liquid form it's counterintuitive <coughs> so yeah um yeah but that's something that seems not in, in the perspectives of for example Airbus. i was in uh, otterbrunn in near munich uh, two weeks ago and saw their uh, hydrogen uh, fuel cell engine uh, my impression is they are very much pushing for that option the fuel cell technology as our orders um, but you mentioned the third option that is probably very new and needs a lot of research and, uh, and development. Yeah, so I've got to make a uh, chart on this because what you're describing, I, I get frequently. And so I'm, I'm seeing an opportunity to um, explain. So you can use hydrogen as a fuel two ways. You can burn it in a combustion yeah. engine or you can use it as a fuel cell. I'm a fan of both, a bigger fan of fuel cells. So I'm not saying either one of those aren't going to work. I believe that they are. Where the interesting piece comes in is how you store that hydrogen yeah. and how you transport that hydrogen. <clears throat> so it's the solid state hydrogen. It's not, a, it's not an engine or a power source, but it's a way to store the hydrogen. So you could still, everything Airbus said would be valid, instead of having a liquid hydrogen tank, you would have solid state hydrogen. So all the you know research that's going on um, would still hold true and still work. You could just have a more efficient way of storing the hydrogen, giving you some more volume, potentially to add more passengers or make it a lighter you know, aircraft and uh, you know, uh, more efficient. So um, I agree with everything that Airbus said. Um, I, I also watched, I think I caught most of it and, and I agreed, I believe with everything, if, if anything, I would just say, it sounds like they're kind of doubling down on liquid, which you got to start somewhere, but maybe I would just say, keep an open mind that a solid state could be coming online soon. And, and that would be a big disruptor to, especially folks who have um, invested a lot into liquid. Liquid will have its role as well, though. Yeah. Okay. That's something to look forward to then in the future on things that will happen. Yeah, for sure. Addison? Thank you so much. Appreciate your, your time. Yes, absolutely. And shameless, pl shameless plug, I just want to invite everybody to attend our free monthly webinars. We have very great distinguished speakers um, from Plug, Universal, we've just about all the people I mentioned and more. Um, you can register at highsky.org or shoot me an email. Uh, they can get it from you all. I guess you'll provide it. Um, and yeah, just uh, and join us in June for the world's largest hydrogen aviation event. We certainly will. Thank you for the, for the chat. Thanks for having me, Richard and Addison. It was my pleasure.